Hey guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. My nickname is iFaceform and in this episode we're going to take a closer look at the Tier 8 Soviet T-54 Mod 1, also known as the T-54 First Prototype. During this tank review we will be looking into whether if it's worth buying, how its tank statistics look, we will compare it against a few of its competitors, including its Tech 3 brother, but also against two heavy tanks. And this is purely due to that this tank, at least on paper, features a quite interesting hull armor. Furthermore, in the armor profile rundown, we focused on its weak spots and its strengths, and afterwards I will take you guys alongside a couple of battles, which I have had recently, which will hopefully give you a good idea of this tank in action. And finally I will finish up with a quick sum up and my rating of this soviet tank okay guys let's get started so the t54 mod 1 is this just another overpowered russian premium tank the thing is back in 2015 when this tank was first introduced to world of tank it was extremely slow we are talking about around 14 horsepower per ton and yes it features the exact same armor so what changed well the tank received a gigantic speed buff some years back and which i must say it completely changed the tank from feeling like a sluggish heavy tank to a fast medium tank a quite agile tank to, to be honest but what about the armor profile the whole armor hasn't changed since its introduction is it really as strong as it used to be back in 2015 a lot of things have changed a lot more tanks has been introduced to the game tanks with higher alpha damage tanks with, with auto loader mechanics of various types tanks with far better penetration values so now as we're nearing the end of 2020 is the tanks armor profile still as good as it was back in 2015 okay guys let's do a quick stats rundown with my current crew and tanks at all my current crew have of course brothers in arms and then i have focused towards the view range and towards the gun handling skills furthermore i've continued the focus towards its camouflage value for the equipment I have selected improved rotation mechanism, vertical stabilizer, and binoculars. We will go into more details just in a second in regards of the equipment choices that I have made. Regarding the ammunition, I have selected 26 AP, 26 APCR, and 4 high explosives. And this is primarily due to that the standard AP shells only provides you 190mm penetration and a not very impressive shell velocity for 895. These AP shells are usually more than enough for T8 battles. The problem arises when you are meeting tier 9 or tier 10 tanks where those AP shells can seem underwhelming. The APCR shells they will provide you a 57 penetration increase and a way better shell velocity but you also will be paying for this with 4400 for each shell. This is quite a lot for a shell that only deals 250 alpha damage. And of course, keep in mind guys that this is a premium tank, that at least for me, I want to earn credits with my premiums. For the consumables, small repair kit, small first aid kit, and fire extinguisher. Let's quickly run down through the statistics. Yes, 250 alpha damage, nothing groundbreaking. Yes, it is better than the 230 or 240 alpha damage that we see on several other medium tanks. But keep in mind guys that in this current meta, we are seeing more and more tanks with higher alpha damage. Yes, back in 2015 when this tank was introduced, that was quite good. But five years world of tanks, a lot of things have changed. 190 penetration, which we just saw. The gun loading with my current crew, 7.5 seconds between the shell. The rate of fire is 8, which translates to a reload time of 7.5 seconds. Tank features a nice gun traverse speed of 48, a gun depression of minus 7, the aiming time 20.6, and a dispersion 0.34. Those values look quite nice, but are they really? The average damage per minute, nothing groundbreaking of 2000, 1300 HP and 120 guys in hull armor. Yes, this looks good. This is starting to look very good. For the turret armor, 200 millimeter. The around 36 ton tank features a nice engine of 760 horsepower, which translates to 21.14 horsepower per ton. Really nice. And light years ahead of the old uh, horsepower per ton values. The top speed of this tank is 44 and reverse speed of 18 and out. Keep in mind guys that, that I would any day prefer to have more more horsepower per ton towards a lower top speed than vice versa. At least for me, it is all about how fast you can get towards your top speed. This is the kind of figures that I enjoy. It reminds me of the T42, which I reviewed not that many days ago, that only features a horsepower per ton of around 40, but a nice top speed. Yes, it is nice with a nice top speed, but it's not very often where you can utilize it fully. And, then it, and when you do, you cannot utilize it for very long. I would any day prefer to have a very high horsepower per ton at the cost of the top speed. So these numbers look very nice. The tank also features a nice traverse speed of 52.69, camera values 32.35 guys when stationary and when moving 25.04. For the view range with my current setup I have 511 and yes of course most players will benefit most of using coded optics but for my current playstyle I have chosen binoculars. So you might be wondering why have a vertical stabilizer and also improved rotation mechanism as the aiming time and the dispersion values looks quite good. The thing is that there are some hidden numbers and yes those hidden numbers hurt this tank quite 
quite a lot. What they do towards this tank is that this tank receives a very large penalty when moving and turning, meaning the gun handling on the move is nothing special. It's actually quite hard to hit anything on the move. Okay guys, so before we dive deeper in, into the armor profile, I must start off by saying this tank is not easy to play well with. There are two reasons for this. The first one is the alpha damage is mediocre at best with the 250. Yes, it is better than the 230, 240, which you see on some of the competing nations. But furthermore, the gun handling while on the move is really poor. It is quite poor. You will especially notice that and see that when we start to compare against the medium tanks and also one of the reasons why I started to compare against two heavy tanks, not only for the armor profile, but also for its gun handling. So at least you know what to expect if you choose to buy this tank. Okay guys, so here we are with the tank comparison. So for today guys, I have chosen to compare it against the Tech Tree T44, the T44-100, the CS-52 list, the Lens and the C, and two heavy tanks, the IS-3 and the VK-4502A. And the two reasons for this is simply because that when we go into the armor profile, I want to show you guys a very quick comparison, but also the gun handling of the VK-4502A is in some aspects similar to the T54 Mod 1. And that is not that surprising because when the T54 Mod 1 arrived to the game, it was was really seen as a heavy tank with a medium tank gun. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the firepower. We noticed that the DPM to the medium tanks is quite low, 1875. Looking at the penetration values, it's definitely not groundbreaking. Several preferential T8 tanks has a penetration value of 186. And yes, notice that the Lance and C and the CS52 list both features a way better penetration value and in addition a way better alpha damage of 320. For the shell velocity, the Soviet medium tanks features around 880 to 895 which can often seem very underwhelming. The shell velocity of the CS-52 list is quite good at 980. The shell velocity on the Russian mediums, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing special. Okay guys, so, so, so far so good. Nothing out of the ordinary for the firepower, at least when comparing the T-54 Mod 1 against its Russian brothers. But what about the gun handling? So the aim time of 2.2 when comparing against the T-44, 2.1 and the T44 102 seconds. What about the dispersion? Also a slight decrease. Okay, but it's not that much. So it seems okay, right? Okay, it's slightly worse than his brothers and slightly worse here. But what about when moving? Guys, check this. 0 0.2. When moving and when tank traverse, these figures are simply horrible. And how horrible are they? Look, T44 has 0 0.14. The T44-100 has 0.12. The CS-52 Liz has 0.14. The Lanson C has 0.18. So you might be thinking, yeah, but it's like a medium heavy-ish, right? Okay, let's compare against the heavy. The VK-4502A has 0.2 and the IS-3 has 0.21. Yes, the gun handling of T-54 Mod 1 is very similar to the German VK-4502A. Dispersion 0.36 versus 0.37. When moving and tank traverse are 0.2 for the T-54 and also for the VK-45. And at last, with the torque traverse, 0.12 versus 0.10. So they share quite similar figures. The gun depression of 7 degrees is quite nice, where of course the Lance and C stands out. Okay guys, let's take a look at the mobility figures, where we directly notice that the forward speed of 44 seems kinda underwhelming. And the same regarding the reverse speed, even that the T-54 Mod 1 is featuring this exact same engine as its brothers. The thing is that this tank has a bit more armor, quite a lot more armor. And yes, after the gigantic speed buff, it is nearly just as fast, at least to get up to its maximum speed. Do notice that the terrain resistances for the T-54 Mod 1 are quite similar to the T-44. The total traverse of the T-54 Mod 1 is 40 degrees, where its Russian brothers have a nice advantage of 8 degrees more. The tank traverse is similar to the rest of the medium tanks, besides of course the T44-100. So yeah, mobility-wise, the T54 Mod 1 shares a lot of similarities with the T44, besides a lower top speed when either going forward or reverse. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the armor figure. And here we can directly see that the whole armor of 120 looks very nice. We have to continue looking further towards the heavy tanks to be able to see these kind of figures. When you look at the turret armor of 200, that is also, at least on paper, better than the other medium tanks and the HP value of 1300 is around the middle. All the medium tanks in this comparison feature similar camo values and they all feature the same base view range of 380. And last the T54 Mod 1 features a standard radio range of 700. Okay guys let's take a deeper look at the armor profile. Okay guys so here we have the T54 Mod 1. Let's switch it to the live view. So how is this tank's armor? 
keep in mind guys that currently we have 190 mm penetration. So right off the bat, when we have the turret facing directly at us, we notice we have nearly 200 mm of armor on the upper part and at the lower plate around 180 mm. For the turret, <laughs> check these values, <laughs> crazy numbers. And of course on the other side, they might be thinking, well you can't penetrate this tank. Of course there is a gigantic green area, yes it has a cupola. But keep in mind guys that this tank will be moving back and forth so it can be a bit tricky maybe to hit that cupola, especially if I'm fighting this tank on ridge lines. Well, <laughs> the problem is the gunman, yes. And look at the upper part and on the side and the lower part. Let's take a top down view. You can see here how well angled the turret armor is. It's amazing angle. So you might be thinking, this looks awesome. <laughs> but let's try to change it to APCR which makes it a bit more clearer regarding where its weak spots are. When you encounter skilled players, they will put their shields right next to your turret. Or, of course, in your cupola. So what about if you're fighting on the ridge line? Notice how the cupola just disappears while the turret is still directly looking at us. Yes, of course, you will retain the fantastic turret side armor, but it does not change the gun battle's effective armor. But the interesting part is that you suddenly your 120 mm of hull armor is able to achieve effective armor between 260 to 250. So what about if we angle it in addition? Let's try to angle the tank. Look at the values of the armor. We're talking about 300 mm of effective armor on the far left and values of around still 250 to 60. So as long as you do not show your lower plate, the tank suddenly features a quite impressive numbers, which will make it a challenge for this 247 APCR shield to penetrate the side armor in this angle. <laughs> yeah, good luck. And even on the side here. So what you can do as the tank driver to prevent that you will receive shells in the gun mantle, keep moving the turret, keep moving the tank just make it as hard for the enemy as possible to hit your gunman let's take a look at the side on for the side of the turret we start with figures of around 170 and finish with around 100 millimeter of effective armor for the top part of the hull we have around 90 millimeters and for the lower part the values range between 90 millimeter to 130 for the rear part we have 75 millimeter of armor and and around 45 millimeter so for this armor profile we are able to achieve around 200 millimeter of effective armor but let's take a comparison guys for the german vk 4502b it features 150 mm of armor, but look at the angling profile. So suddenly guys, even it has 30 mm more armor, we still only achieve an effective armor of around 220 to, to around 250. If you look back again on the T-54 first prototype, then we're able to reach figures of that range between 200 mm to 100. So yes, the angle of the armor matters a lot. T-54 first prototype and we give 4502. Another example would be taking a look at the Chinese 112 which also features 120 mm of armor. But look at which angle. Yes. Take a look at the T54, the angle, and suddenly the 112. So what does that do to your armor? Let's get the throw to point right at us and look at the values here. 250, nearly 260 in upper part and around 240. So yes, you can do a lot with 120 mm of armor if, if, as long as it's angled correctly. And even if we compare it against an IS-3 armor profile, Okay guys, so on paper it looks good, but how is it on the battlefield? Let's take a look guys and let's see how it goes. Okay guys, so here we are on Tundra. We are playing with it in the T-54 mod 1 and we are bottom tier. So my first thought is, yeah, playing with the medium tank on Tundra, yeah, 9-0 line. The heavies will mo most likely go in the 1 line, but lately seems like the meta have changed just slightly because I have quite often seen that there is a gigantic heavy tank push from this side instead. So currently it's quite hard to predict exactly how, how the game is going to turn out. Oh, nice shot by the Hawk 30 on the side, not so good for us. And yeah, we don't have side armor in this, in this tank here. Yeah. Super ask up there, that's going to be dangerous. They empty both the magazine into me, then yeah, I would definitely be dead, especially with that shot also I took, I have only 1040 HP, so I'm definitely going to take it more defensive at this stage. It's well played by the enemy, enemy team to put two Barasks there. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like my own team also volunteered. I volunteered. They also agreed on it. And on the one line, guys, as you see, they have gigantic heavy push there. That is going to fall within seconds. So, opportunities. Zero two, we. 
EMS and we are already behind nearly 2000 HP. Not a good start. Track him, look. Shot him. Yeah, it's a bit shame that the alpha damage is not more in this tank, but yeah, the tank is from 2015 originally. Can hit by the light tank, it's starting to get more and more annoying. <laughs> to run away. They're jumping down, yeah. Push in now. Okay, so we got the right flank of the map. Unfortunately, yeah, we lost completely the left one. No chance for our tanks there. That was really nice push by the enemy team. Let's see how much we can do here. It's 5 7 at this current stage. Can I put in a shell on the roof? Yeah. Exact spot here, like when you fire shell, you need to get away directly. Oh, that was bad, me. Bad, bad, bad. Should never auto aim that one. Put in a shell. Yeah. yeah and we have an extreme push from the southern part now on the K5. Bit of a dilemma. Should I go back and support? But of course, how much can I support at this current stage? Maybe I can take out that one. Yes. <laughs> nice. That shot felt good. That guy has been annoying me now. Three times. Can I put in a shell? Shell into me. Come on. Yeah. I don't think the enemy team at this stage will cap us out because, as they only have advantage of yeah four tanks, the majority of them might be thinking, yeah, let's just kill the remaining people off. Very. Kill the tiller replay with another shell into me, and I definitely need to get away, or else that light tank is going to claim my poor soul. Okay, we're down at 220 HP. Go on. Okay, 912. <laughs> and we have 20 HP left. Okay, still not so far there. We got a Samoa Essa in the middle of the map. I was asking for help. I got the T28 with me. The thing is that it looks like some more enemies could be surrounded. The enemy team definitely haven't chosen to have us out at that stage. They can put in a shell on the road. Oh, it seems it goes down there. Let's see, can we put a shell? Can we put I just need to look out and not to fall down? Yeah! And away, away, away. They have two artilleries. We put a shell into him. Okay. Our oh, teammate did it. Instead of 11, 12. Looks like we got a small HP advantage still, but we cannot trust those figures. I 
we lost another one. Okay, so it's just me and T T28 left. So, um, we have a small dilemma here. It's like, should I try with the T28? Support him at this stage? Or should I see if I can maybe put in a... Find some tanks that will be driving here. So T28 has quite like, a lot of like... Oh, nice, nice, nice. Good job by... Uh, by our T28. So yeah, we have two tanks. But we know also that that light tank player is, is quite good. At least <laughs> very good at this in this game. And quite annoying. Especially putting on so many shells into me. Definitely the light tank player has a nice advantage because he can outspot us without any problems. No, uh, as, and as I only have 20 HP, I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> maybe the safest thing right now will actually be to drive together with the T28. He can take the first shell in, and there's a better chance because if, if I go solo versus the light tank player, it's a good chance he can outspot me and then either get the uh, both artilleries to splash damage me or he can or he can just kill him me himself the question is whether the enemy have repositioned the uh, artists it's usually at the start of the game they usually are at the five six seven line they could also place them on A1. That's a good question. I'm just following along the T28. <laughs> so yeah, so yes, this tank has some armor. We, we were just looking at his armor's profile, but guys, if you, if you check how much damage uh, I've been able to bounce, 240. Yeah, and that, that's a lot of games that feels this way. In the heat of the battle, it is not always that you can will have the time and the <laughs> extra energy, extra opportunity to think about. Okay, let me angle my armor this way and be a part of all those small details. It's interesting where the enemy are. Where One splash damage shot towards me, and I will be the the super lucky. Five minutes left of the game. The thing is, <laughs> the enemy team could also, uh, well, maybe have chosen just to drive all of them into our cap. So maybe they're going in the server line here underwater. If they simulate, if they place all the, the three tanks, no one tank and the two SPGs in the cap zone simultaneously, that would definitely be a bit challenging for us because the T28 is not the fastest. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Can we put a shell into the shell in? Nice. So now, now I'm spotted. I'm a bit afraid of the other splash damage by the. Potential splash damage, I'm moving a bit back right here. Okay, both of the artillery was here, that was a bit of a surprise. Can we put a shell in? Yeah. <laughs> the T28 and we we are sh sharing five kills each. Ooh, the light tank the light tank I haven't been spotted yet, would be interesting. Where is he? One of us hopefully will get a top gun. Can I put a shot? No! <laughs> what a game! What a play by the T28! 
Okay guys, so here we are on El Haluf. So luckily on this map we are mid tier. Or top tier or bottom tier. <laughs> so yeah, for this map, for this tank, yeah, definitely C2. Will be how the how this tank will be able to cope with those fresh lines. So the thing is that the arm of the tank on paper it looks quite good. It looks actually very good. The problem is that as good as it looks on paper, it honestly doesn't feel like that. Especially, yeah, especially when uh, when people can just put in uh, like use <laughs> high pen uh, gold shells, high penetration gold shells, and fire 200, 300 millimeter shells. Nice, nice first shot. CS52 list, which has no all armor to be honest. It's a bit bad that one. This will be a definitely interesting because this tank should shine in this location as long as we don't get overrun because we can only see the P44 from Terra so now left flank and even the CS52 list here is also pushing the problem with the aiming of this tank is that the this gun dispersion and the move and this scenario where this tank should shine is not very good. Gunblum is big. And keep in mind, guys, that I use two equipment that uh, give us a total reduction of 30% of gun gunblum when I hit down our teammates' turret. Chaotic. Be hit by the left line. Let's see if I can get a shell. Team is definitely aggressive. Yeah. So we've already blocked 1250. We have the same amount as HP we got. Get worried about that one. Yeah. Bounce one and receive one. Let's see how teammate is pushing. Nine is not the best. Bad shot. Yeah, <laughs> just managed to angle it properly. So yeah, you can definitely bounce in this tank. The thing is that when the team has that one second extra, half second extra to properly aim, there's really no problem. So yes, even I have block 1680 at this current stage it doesn't really feel like that at any point that I can really trust this armor because keep in mind that you can just sh if if I don't have like a word don't show them my side or showing my weak spots then they can always just shoot on my gunman for us the left or right side of my turret so special mix up on this tank because yeah it, it wants to feel like a medium tank especially after the speed buff 
but the gun handling is still like if it was a heavy tank. Yes, now we of course we are fighting a range as this, so we don't fight like 50 to 100 meters range, but it's, it still doesn't really feel 100 percent accurate to be honest. Let's just show to the right here. It doesn't really matter if it's the ICU or it's the other tank that will hit me. I will be dead as soon as there will be a penetrating shot. Can I put in the shell? Oh, yeah. Ooh, and fire. Yeah, Russian luck. Yeah, definitely Russian luck. Maybe this was just mine. Nice. Okay. So currently 3233 damage and 1600 AD blocked. We go guys so with the t54 mod 1 the thing is i have really mixed feelings about this tank let me explain why first of all it feels kind of ironic that a tank that at first glance looks to be a very new player friendly is not really the thing is that, that this tank in the hands of a super skilled player with a very good crew can be extremely strong especially if you're lucky to meet lower tier tanks but for the general matchmaking and for the general player trading shots with a 250 alpha is really not groundbreaking especially with a gun that behaves like a heavy tank gun and in the, those situations where you're trading shots against a 320 or even 390 alpha or more then your armor angling skill set and everything else in your toolbox needs to be that much better compared to, to the player you're facing to get any form of advantage furthermore if you buy this tank purely for its armor then you will be disappointed when you're facing tier 9 and 10s because those tanks will penetrate you like butter so the thing is that in this tank you really need to win those one versus one duels not by a slight margin but preferably by a lot more so the t54 mod 1 or t54 first prototype how many face points would i give this tank to be honest guys this tank has given me a headache the last few days i really want to like this tank so yeah my main problem is that i do not enjoy this tank i really want to but i just don't the gun handling is, is horrible and maybe it's just me but having two decent battle replays for you guys was way harder than it should be. But yes, if you're thinking whether you should buy this tank, I would highly recommend you to, to grind the standard T44, including the IS-3. What you are going to get with this tank is the mobility and agility of a, of a T44 with the gun handling of an IS-3. This is a tank I really want to love, but I just can't. If those hidden numbers were better, then yeah, then, then this tank would have so much potential. But even with improved rotation mech and even with vertical stabilizer, it's just not making for me. And the alternatives, the other premium tanks that you can get are just so much more enjoyable. Okay guys, let's sum up. I hope of course that this tank review was helpful towards your decision on whether to buy. And thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you think of the T54 mod 1 or <laughs> the T54 first prototype in the comments below. And as always, if you like to see more crazy content from my side, feel free to leave a like or even subscribe. It's a big thumbs up for me and I appreciate it a lot. Cheers guys, take care and see you next time.